You are listening to the Mark Guzman Podcast Experience. I actually started off in Terra Hills. Okay. Um, well, what part of Terra Hills? Because there's a small section of Terra Hills that's Pinole. Terra Hills, Terra Hills. Okay. Like San Pablo. San Pablo, Terra Hills. Okay. Yeah, like down the street was Nations. Okay. Um, and what used to be Sprouse Ritz, which has not been there for a really long time. Like my mom and I would go there and get paper dolls, and there would be like a popcorn machine. It was like this fun little five and dime. Um, and then, you know, there's Montalvin. Um, now, oh. was that shop in the little strip center that was there? Yeah. 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 Um, God, it hasn't been there. In, nothing's really been there in forever. Nothing's been there. I think that's just abandoned now. Completely, except for Nations. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I grew up in I that. Think nations can pop up anywhere and be successful. I think you're right. And I've never eaten there. Really? I know. At Nations or that specific location? Yes. At any Nations? Yes. Are you kidding me? I know. You're going to wow. take away my Pinole card? Well, you need to get to Nations right away. We should have had know. a Nations testing today and not a beer tasting. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> or both. Yeah, or both. Yeah, that is true. Episode is sponsored by Nations and East Brother Beer. I like that sound of it, right? Sold. Um, yeah, so I grew up on McMara Road and um, Stewart School in Pinal, Crespi Junior High, Pinal Valley High, Chico State, and then my parents moved to Pinal Valley. Mm-hmm. And that's when they got the four bedrooms in the pool. I know so many people from Pinal, San Pablo, that went to Chico State. How do you like it? I thought it was beautiful. Everyone said it's a total party school. Well, it's true if you're a partier. Mm-hmm. But if you're like a boring bookworm type, it's not. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I loved it. I had my very first drink there. Uh, I gained the freshman 25 and discovered my love of theater. So how how has Pinot changed for you from when you grew up to today? Well, you see that big fucking eyesore down the road? <laughs> <laughs> that will now be the new Pinot Valley High. Yeah. Um, when I think of Pinot and my childhood, I think of walking from Stewart School, cutting through, you know, like walking down Sarah and cutting through the gate at the top of the hill behind Pinot Valley High and then walking to the library. And, and spending the library or the afternoon of the library until my mom picked us up. That's what I think of. Um, riding my bike. Um, you know, just very safe, by and large. Um, very relaxed. Um, very low-key. Um, I think of Pinal Valley Lanes, which is still, mm-hmm. it will always be janky because it's a bullet galley. Yeah. Um, I think of the Red Onion. And, and now you've got you know, fucking five guys and Krispy Kreme and... At least tell me you've eaten that red onion, right? I love red onion. Yeah. I grew up eating red onion. Um, but, you know, like, I'll refuse to go to Krispy Kreme and I'll go to Ala Mode. Um, I won't go to Five Guys. I'll go to Red Onion. Um, yeah, they have Five Guys. They have Habit Burger now. They have Habit, yep. I think there's, like, another burger joint, I feel, coming in. We don't need one. There's more. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah, so it's it's become more... <laughs> it's it's become more colonized. Um, I won't say gentrified because it's not, but it's um it's definitely busier. They've got more you know shoppy shops, and you know they've completely raised Pinal Valley High. So you know like this, you know sweet little one story. Well, it wasn't sweet, but you know this one story thing where you could go off campus for lunch, um, which didn't last that long. Um, is now being replaced with what I am assured will be a big, beautiful high school, but now it just kind of looks like a prison castle high school. A prison castle? <laughs> it does. <laughs> um, so for me, that's how it's changed. However, um, I have a big circle of people here who were friends in high school who are still here and who have made lives for themselves and who have you know really become part of the community. And I love that. I just hung out with my friend Jen Hansen the other day, who went to Pinal Valley High and now teaches French at De Anza, which I think is really cool. And um, and my friend Ray, who has the shop in Point Richmond, um, he just lives up on Alamo. Okay. Um, 
so in some ways it's changed and in some ways it hasn't and I'm closer with my high school friends now than I was then because I think after a while you just kind of stop being an asshole and just like become an adult <laughs> 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 at least I hope so yeah that's interesting most people end up not st staying friends with their high school friends everyone you know you grow up and lives happen and everyone splits apart but it's interesting that you re do you always remain friends with people or do you reconnect both. I want to say the reconnecting happens in a way where, you know, you're maybe friendly with someone, um, but the connections have become deeper and stronger. And I was talking to my friend Piper about it from high school, who now lives in Martinez, um, and has just started a job as a teacher within her own school district. So I think that's a really nice full circle. Um, I, for me, what's happened is a desire to go back to my roots and to the people who knew me when I was, you know, 13, 14, 15, when I was, you know, becoming a person. So that's why that's happened for me. And I talked about it with Piper and she said, yeah, you want to go back, you want to go back home. So for me, it's about connecting with home. And a lot of these people for me are home. Now, do you grow up with a dog? No, because my parents wouldn't let me have one. No. Because your Instagram bio says you moonlight as a dog lover. Oh, well, I will stop and talk to every single dog, um, or I throw myself at them. Um, the owners, whatever. Um, well, yeah, do you talk to the owner, too, or just the dog? The one thing I say to the owner is, can I say hi to your dog? Oh, yeah, and that's it. And, and yeah, fuck him. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, good. I'm the same. I. I don't want to talk to the person. <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, let me make out with your dog. Yeah. <laughs> um, so every one of my family not only has a dog, they have a rescue dog, which for me is really important. I mean, every single dog in the world needs a home, but stop fucking making them. Um, I would. There's too many careless dog owners, you know, and they just let dogs breathe left and right and or they, let them run on into the street. Or they say, hey, um, I'll sell you my brand new puppy for, you know, a thousand dollars. Yeah, well, let's let's table that for now because it just makes me want to hit people. <laughs> um, I I wrote a play about it. Um, so. This is uh, Judah the shop dog. Okay, so Judah the shop dog, um, she's this big beautiful pit bull, and if you don't know her and you pull into the driveway, you've got this you know pit like running toward you with her ears cut off and. But she's just like a wiggle butt. She's a love. She just wants to sit in your lap. Um, I feel like pit bulls get so, such a bad rap. And that's really because of um, like a bad dog owner not raising the pit bull correctly. Ding, ding, ding. Um, yeah, I think they're the most misrep. They're one of the most misrepresented breeds. And they really don't get a fair shake. Um, there are... There are breed-specific bands all over the world. Um, they are loyal. They are smart. And one of the best things about them and the worst things about them is their loyalty to their owner. You know, mm -hmm. you know, is it good or is it evil? Um, but they were originally used as nanny dogs. If you look up pictures. Really? Pitbull nanny dogs. Yeah. They were used to guard the kids. Um they're also known for their gentle nature and yeah so you're you're right they're they get a really bad rap yeah so so judah the shop dog so i'm making this movie and i was location scouting and one of the places we're going to use and i know i'm jumping ahead um but it's all tied in is square deal garage um i talked to brandon osmond and he was just so great and then the Wilkies, with whom I'm staying, said, well, you know, Mike is a high school friend and he has a garage at his house. And I thought, just because you have a cappuccino maker doesn't mean that you can shoot like a coffee shop scene in your kitchen, <laughs> um, which is true, um, but very narrow. And they said, well, it's Kurt Pedracci in El Sobrani. So we're driving along Apian and we went down the driveway and it's just it's like this beautiful oasis farmhouse and professional shop and that's where judah the shop dog lives she's kurt's dog 
So I have photos of her sleeping in her dog bed, um, you know, behind a 55 Chevy. She just likes to be there next to Kurt as he works. And, um, you know, people were saying, well, we know you love dogs. Can you have dogs in your movie? And I said, no, that's not the world it is. This is about cars. And then I walked in and there's a dog and I thought, okay, I guess we're going to have dogs in it. Mm -hmm. Because people love people love it like when they walk into a hardware store and there's a shop dog i just went to um beer revolution in oakland not only are they dog friendly but there's wally the the bartender dog who just hangs out people love a mascot the bartender dog that's what i call him he's the dog of the bartender okay. but he hangs out and when people come in he'll jump up and put his paws on the counter and say hi to everyone <laughs> i have photos he's beautiful or he'll come out from behind and go and sniff everyone and make sure they're okay. So that's probably what it will be with Judah. Mm -hmm. Now, Grease Monkey. Yeah. Where's the term Grease Monkey? Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. Thank you to our producer, Sam Lemon. Please subscribe, like, comment, and share the podcast. Remember, you can listen to the podcast on iTunes, Podbean, iHeartRadio, Google Play, SoundCloud, and anywhere else you listen to podcasts. For more information on my business as a property manager and real estate team, go visit my website at markguzman.com. I really, really want to thank all of you for listening. It means the world to me, and I hope today's episode provides you value in your day-to-day -day life. I created this podcast to help showcase the many great people that live in this world and help share some knowledge that I've learned along the way in life. Again, thank you for listening. Check out our sponsors and I'll catch you on the next episode.